In this video, I'm going to outline three traits that I learned as JLo's number one fan that has shaped me into the woman that I am today. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Louisa Nicola. I'm a neurophysiologist and human performance coach, and I'm the founder of NeuroAthletics, where our mission is to democratize brain health education so you can perform better, think faster, and live longer. I'm also JLo's number one fan. That is correct. I'm going to place a photo here. And this photo is from her book. So she re released her only ever book. And this was, I think, around 2013. And there is a photo of me in there. Um, I was also featured in her documentary. I also went on stage with her at her 2012 Sydney tour. And, you know, I have been following her career since... Uh, was it 1998 since I was around 12 13 years old and I when I first heard her um, heard her song I just started following her career and it's been a great journey I've been to all of her concerts but people often ask me like why why her and I have to say that if you really understand who she is if you really understand what she's about you will know that she has been dubbed as the hardest working woman in Hollywood. That's because she is. Every single year, without a doubt, she's doing something new. She is overcoming adversity. She is uh, quietening the inner critic. She is speaking out about her truth. Yes, she's been married four times. Yes, she goes on about her heartbreaks. But she still does it with beauty and with grace. And let's face it, she's aging like a fine bottle of wine. So here are some traits that I've learned from her. The first one is silence your inner critic. She said once, when I first started in my career, it was almost as if you had to be quiet. If you did speak out, it was like, oh, I'm sorry, are you speaking? That inner eye roll I had going on was real and it was a part of the time that we were in. And I have had also a inner critic that would also always tell me, okay, you're not doing the right thing. You're not, um, you're not doing, your, your competition is getting ahead of you. Your competition is better than you. Um, when it comes to social media, I've got an inner critic that is always telling me, um, okay, you can do better or what will she think or what will he think? And there's just no room for that in business right? Some of the most successful people in this world just don't have room to be a critic to themselves because business, business is very logical when, you know, when it's just, when you just think about numbers and you have a goal in mind, it's very hard to keep romanticizing this inner critic. So that's one thing that she actually recently spoke about in her uh, documentary, her part two documentary, where she says, you know, people think that, you know, people look at me and laugh every time I have a, a breakdown, every time I do a movie and it doesn't go well and it was a flop. People laugh at me. People think, oh, JLo wants to do another musical. What will she think of next? So she's got a lot of, she's had a lot of bad press. And I guess now, you know, this year, I believe she's turning 54. So she's had, she's been in showbiz since she was about 20. So there's a lot of time there. There's 34 years there of, of constant, you know, criticism. So that builds up over time and it gets to her and that's built up over me over time. And I've just learned to, I wouldn't even say obliterate it, but I've learned to listen to it and anchor it and accept it that it's there and just tell myself, Louisa, these stories don't exist. You know, whenever I think about something in my head, I overthink something. I think about, What's the story you're telling yourself? What's the rumination? And what's the actual truth? And the only way I'll believe my inner thoughts and my inner critic is if I can gather evidence for that. And more often than not, I can't gather evidence for it. The second thing that I've learned from her is adversity. And this has been the biggest turning point for me and is why I am more successful than the 99% of people who are actually born and raised in New York. I meet people every day who were born and raised here and they have achieved 
minuscule things compared to me. I think it's because adversity breeds character and character breeds success. So just like JLo, which she talks about this, she was born in a low socioeconomic family. She was born and raised in the Bronx. She, at the time, nobody was accepting Latina girls. She looked different. Her body was different. She was, she was a dancer. She was not, and she was an entertainer. She wasn't an actress. She wasn't a singer. She landed Selena and the Living Color, but she landed Selena, which was her first acting role. And she did that really well. And that was her stardom. But like, she was not born for that. She had to really, really master. And the only reason she got it was because she looked the part, not because of her acting skills. She's gone through major adversity when it comes to her breakups, when it comes to her movies that have not done well. So I look at her and I think, wow, she's had to overcome so much in her career. She's had to face challenges of a competitive industry. She battled rejection, stereotypes, the constant pressure to conform. Yet she remained undeterred and her dreams were unwavering. She had a dream and it was also always to be in movies and to be famous and to be in Hollywood and she made that happen. And she worked really, really hard for that. And like me, I've come from Australia and I've got to tell you, it was probably the best thing I ever did because I came here and I had to work so freaking hard. I had to work to find friends, to make them my family. So I had to put in the work for that. Um, I had to work to figure out where I was in this world. I had to work for my visa. I came here, I had 90 days. An Australian comes in on an Esther, you have 90 days. After that, if you don't secure yourself a job, you have to exit the country. I, can't. I went on 40 interviews. 40 interviews. That means I sent out about 150 resumes, 40 interviews. And out of those, none of them were willing to give me a visa to work except one. I got it on my last day, on my last 90th day. And I got to tell you, I had reached the last dollar on my credit card, on my Amex. I thought I was going to die that day. I finally got a call back. I flew to Barbados and that's where I did my visa. So when I came back to the country, I had the visa for two years and that grit and determination to find a job was just like, I look back now and I think it's mind blowing because now I've got friends who are like, Louise, I just can't find a job. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's because you've got no, you've got nothing that's actually lighting a fire underneath you. I did. I had to find a job or I would have been kicked out of here in 90 days. I didn't look like a lot of people around here. I didn't speak. I feel like even though you talk English in Australia and in America, I feel like I didn't talk the same language. I didn't know where I was. I had no idea about anything. I could have been easily manipulated. It was so hard. I didn't even have a bank account for God's sake. I didn't even know what uptown and downtown was, but I made it work. I also went into a highly competitive field, health, fitness, medicine. I was overcome with scrutiny people asking me who you are, who do you think you are coming into our world? And yet I still persevered. Then when I launched the New Athletics Coaching Certificate, people were like, who do you think you are launching something? I said, do you know how many times, mainly men that have actually said to me, who do you think you are launching this program in this city? You, somebody actually said to me, and he's a, a celebrity trainer. He said this in 2018. He said, Louisa, sit your ass down there are levels to this industry. And guys, let me tell you this. That guy has gone nowhere since the day that I met him. And he is desperate for my attention. He messages me. He tries to get on my podcast. He hits me up constantly. And he wonders, he says, why are you not getting in touch with me? It's like, because I've surpassed you. There are levels in this industry and I have surpassed you. So, they're the first two. Now let's move on to the third one. And that is, she said specifically in an interview, what makes you different makes you strong. Here is a quote from her. I always said that when I went out in Hollywood, it was the fact that I was from the Bronx that helped me. It was that I was so different from everyone out there that, and that's what separated me and it became my biggest strength. That is why throughout my career, I am always Jenny from the block. I'm real, 
It is important to me. It is who I am. It is the blood that pumps through my veins. It makes you hungry to remember that you had nothing and then to want more. And every single day, the thing that keeps pushing me forward through the hard times, I mean, I don't have my family in this country and it's really, really hard. I get sad. I get lonely. I get depressed without them. I keep reminding myself, Louisa, look at the success that you've had. You're working with, you know, I've got executives who are, you know, billionaires who come to me. My name is all through Wall Street here as a person. People are putting their hands up at hedge funds saying, we want Louisa as our in, in-house performance coach. Obviously, I can't work in-house, but one of the biggest and most profitable hedge funds in New York City have asked to be for me to be their personal in-house uh, performance coach and I keep turning them down. But I always remember that at the end of the day, the performance coach, the neurophysiologist, that's, that's all well and good. But the thing that makes me different I- in this city is my accent. It is the way I look. I'm Greek Cypriot. Um, I have a, a strong cultural background and everything that I've done throughout my life, whether it's been a triathlete, studying science, studying medicine, being JLo's number one fan, it has shaped me to who I am today. So I take it on board and I run with it and I bloody love it. And that's what I learned from her. I also want to point out that I've been in JLo's documentary. I've been in her book, which I'm going to put a photo here. That's of me at her 2020, at her 2012 Sydney concert. Um, I've been shopping with her. I've been in a private dance class with her. I've gone to all of her concerts. I'm front row at her August concert coming up. And not because it's like I'm fangirling. That's not what this is. is. I actually, I'm a very committed person. I'm a very committed person. Once I commit to something or someone, I see it through. And that's what I've done with the Neuroathletics Coaching Certificate. I am on a mission to certify 10,000 coaches so we can shrink the mortality curve. That is why I'm doing this. I'm out there because I know I have lost several people to diseases. I lost my grandmother. She was my best friend and she brought me up. I lost her to pancreatic cancer. And then I lost my auntie who was also like my second mother. I lost her to pancreatic cancer. Um, since then I've gone on this journey. My father has had a stroke and I'm just like, why are people getting these diseases? And it comes down to lack of education, lack of resources, and we have the power to change that narrative and I'm going to do it. So I hope this inspired you. I hope it gave you a bit of an insight into who I was and where I get this determination from. I was literally built for this and I'm not stopping. I cannot wait to get to the 10,000 coaches. And I also can't wait to see J-Lo in concert here in New York City. And this will be the first time that I ever get to see her in concert in New York City.